Well, now the build begins. You know, this weekend for the NFL playoffs, AFC and N NFC have been really intriguing. Really interesting, if you will. Now, yesterday, the 49ers and the Vikings played. And at first, it seemed like it was a good game. The Vikings scored first. Being 49er fans, you know, consider, okay, it's early, it's not going to hurt. And it didn't, because the 49ers came back and tied. Or at least they scored. And then they started to get on a roll. And that seemed to be the common theme today, or this weekend, with a lot of the teams that won. It's like they get knocked down, and all of a sudden they just need that instant ejection of wake-up juice, and it's off to the races. And the 49ers did that. Yeah, the Vikings gave them a good game, but in the end, the 49ers proved that they just wanted it a bit more. And they ended up winning, and thus, they will be hosting the NFC Championship. But the question was, who would they face? We found that out just moments ago. Um, but before we get into that, let's take a look at the AFC side of things. The whole world watching. Titans. Ravens. Prime time. You would think the Ravens are going to steamroll over the Titans. But yet, even though I didn't watch a little bit at the beginning, the Titans did get a little bit of a roughed up. But it's like the Titans took the momentum. The momentum that they got by beating New England. The momentum that they got over securing that last playoff spot. And they continued to run with it. They ran with it. And basically what happened is people would tell them, you're going into New England, you're not going to win. They win. You're going to Baltimore, number one seed, you're doomed. And guess what? They took that motivation. They took that motivation and they said, screw you, we're going to win. And that's what they did. They proved the world wrong. Yes, the Ravens tried to give them a game, but in the end, Tennessee caught Baltimore. And I say this with all due respect, sleeping. Because some people may say this, and I'll say it. To some, it may seem like Baltimore was being cocky. Like, oh, we're number one. We'll have home field. Nothing's going to happen. And yet it did. So now the Tennessee Titans are in the AFC Championship. But who do they go to? We found that today. That, uh, we found out that today as well. Because this morning, we had, well, this afternoon, I should say, we had the Chiefs. We had the Texans. And to say that what Jeff Siegel, the Schlag Daddy on Schlag Daddy TV said before I paused it to do my own review, and I do, did that with all due respect, to say that it was bizarre world at first is an understatement. I mean, the fact that within the first quarter, the first freaking quarter, Chiefs are down 24 nothing. Well, down 24 to 3, I think. Not even halfway out of the first quarter, Texans are already up 21 0. Like, what the hey? I'm watching this and I'm thinking, well, we got another one. Well, Houston's going to prep up RNJ Stadium. That's what my thought. My thought was that the moment that 21 0 lead happened and then the 24 3 deal happened, the thought in my mind, and I'm sure everybody else's mind is, well, the the Texans owners are on the phone right now calling up the grounds clue, crew to clean RNJ Stadium up, to clean up the field a little bit, get ready to put down that AFC Championship presented by TurboTax logo on the sidelines, lines, or near the sidelines, on various parts of the field, get ready, and basically get everything set for the AFC Championship. That was the first thing that went through my mind. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. That that's what the Houston Texans owners and some of the NFL, uh, uh, some of the NFL, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Some of the NFL corporate suits were probably doing. They were calling up the grounds crew at NRJ Stadium, telling them, clean everything up. 
Go out there right now. Clean up everything. Make it all look nice and nice and shiny and whatever. Get your spray cans ready to put down that AFC Championship presented by Triple Tech's logo on one side of the field and the other side of the field. That's probably what they were saying. It's probably what they were saying, but guess what? Guess what? It did not happen. It did not happen because even though it may have seemed in the first half, in the first quarter, that that could have been exactly what was being prepared to be done. And I say that sarcastically, but maybe I'm serious that they could have been calling up the ground school crew or considering it to tell them get ready to make NRJ Stadium look nice. But in the end, what happened was amazing. Crazy, but amazing. Because the Chiefs, at the end of the first quarter and into the second quarter, woke up. They, they woke up. It's like the moment, it's like on one play, one offensive play, Mahomes, he goes down. He, his ankle gets hit. Right here, he's limping up a little bit. Not bad, not like, oh, he's got to be out of the game. No, but he's just like shaking it off. And they give him a timeout. The Chiefs take a timeout. Andy Reid takes a timeout and says, no, 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 no. I want, I want to give my guy some extra time to walk it off, walk it off, walk it off. You know what I'm saying? And obviously that worked. Because not only did he give t Patrick Mahomes time to walk it off, but he gave his Chiefs the idea of, did you see what just happened? And Mahomes on the sideline going into the second quarter. It's like, guys, we got to wake up. Did you see what just happened to me? Or could have happened to me there? And that's the spark. I think the moment, the moment, the potential, the potentialness of Mahomes going down with an injury and being taken out, it woke the Chiefs up. It woke them up and they said, ah, oh, you ain't doing that crap. And suddenly, out of nowhere, here's a touchdown. Here's a touchdown. Here's one touchdown um, on a pass. Here's one touchdown on a fumble from a kickoff. Kickoff turned into a touchdown. Here's another and another. And before you know it, before we go into the sec into halftime, it's 28-24 Chiefs. It's 28-24 Chiefs. Then we get into the second quarter. Yeah, the uh, we get into the second quarter, and the Chiefs score again. And they score again. Texans get another score. But they score again. Chiefs score again. And they score again. And they score again. They were on a roll. Texans tried coming back. Don't get me wrong. But they were on a freaking roll. I think <laughs> I think Alex said it best. Just Alex, formerly Deluxe Man. I think he said it best on Twitter. He goes out to the store for a few moments. His team's leading. Next thing he knows, he comes back, checks up on the game. His team's losing. He's like, what happened? And I'm sure all the other Houston fans are thinking that. And you know what? What happened was the fact that the star player of the Chiefs nearly got taken out. And I think that was the spark that woke him up. He's like, you want to hurt this guy? Take him out? And you know, people could take that any which way. Players could take that any which way. And you know what? That woke him up. That woke up Mahomes. That woke up that offensive line, that defensive line. They said, screw this shit. You ain't... You ain't going to put him out, and you ain't going to ruin our chances to get back. Back to the Super Bowl for the first time in 50 years. And it was that spark, like I said, in the second quarter and throughout the second half that lifted the Chiefs to a 51-31 victory. So now, because of that, Kansas City is going to host the, NFC champ the AFC Championship, I think, for the second time. Second time in three years, or second time I'm... Um, in two years straight, they are hosting the AFC Championship. And it's the Tennessee Titans. And on the AFC side of things, you could not paint a better, you could not paint a better picture. A better picture of two teams, despite records being different, no one would think would get to this point. But oh, we're not done. We're not done. Then we get Green Bay, Seattle. And you think, by watching the game for a little bit, by the calls, that some of the calls that Seattle was getting away with in the eyes of some people, you're thinking, oh, great, the referees are going to give Seattle the game. And that pretty much would set up a Seattle-San Francisco rematch. The one thing that I will admit, 
that no 49er fans wanted. Because they know that if they got Seattle one more time on the home turf, Wilson would do everything he can to get it back at him. They know that if that would have happened, the, da the deck would have been stacked against them. And it looked like that could potentially happen, but Green Bay came back. They scored first. Seattle scored next. It was back and forth. This was probably one of the better closely contested contests in the divisional round so far. And just when it looked like, in the end, as you get towards the end of the game, just when it looks like Seattle's going to pull it out one more time, Wilson, Wilson's going to pull out his magic one more time, pull another rabbit out of his hat. And send Seattle to San Francisco, Green Bay's defense steps up and says, not on our turf. Not on our turf. And then after the defense steps up, the offense, Aaron Rodgers and the offense steps up and says, it's now or never. Because they know if they don't get the first down they need, need, they don't get to a certain point of the field with time left. They don't get that all-important first down amongst others. And Seattle's going to get the ball back, and knowing Wilson Wilson, he could potentially work magic and lead Seattle to victory. And that didn't happen. And thankful, and I'm sure a lot of Packer fans are thankful that didn't happen because what happened on Lambeau Field or at Lambeau Field just moments ago, that offensive line stepped up. Aaron Rodgers worked his own magic, passed, asked in the directions to the receivers he needed to pass it to, connected. Ran a bit, if he had to, and was able to get those first downs needed, needed significantly needed, I should say, to ice the game. I mean, that last, that last first down they got, people didn't know whether or not it was going to be turn, overturned, and it would be a fourth and one. But thankfully, in the, for a lot of Packers fans, that did not happen. Thankfully for a lot of 49ers fans, and the overturn did not happen. And as a result... Green Bay is going on to San Francisco. And Tennessee on the other side is going to Kansas City. And I am going to say this. I am going to say this. Whether you still believe a fix is in or you don't. We have, for the first time in quite some time, a legitimate conference. We have two legitimate, well-deserved, well-earned, hard-worked work to get to conference championship games. Tennessee at Kansas City. Green Bay at San Francisco. It's something different, guys. It's something different because think of the intrigue that we... Think of the end result that we would get from this. We could get Tennessee versus Green Bay. Tennessee versus San Francisco. Kansas City versus San Francisco. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The one... Think how... Think how ironic it would be. How, how ironic it would be and convenient it would be that in the 100th season of the NFL, the first two teams that met in the first Super Bowl ever meet in Super Bowl 54 in the 100th season of the NFL, that being the Kansas City Chiefs and the Green Bay Packers. Imagine that, guys. Again, you have potential other matches. Kansas City, San Francisco, Tennessee, Green Bay, Tennessee, San Francisco. But think about the ironicness and the conveniences that in the 100th season, to close it out, you would be having the two teams that were in the first Super Bowl facing each other in the 54th Super Bowl. Just saying. Just saying. That is so ironic, so coincidental that that could happen. But again, when you look at these conference championships, these are ones that I think no matter how people feel about either team, these are ones that are more, they feel more legit, more well earned, more hard work put in by the players to get to this point, point, and, no and basically in the end, no political BS. So, here's to next week. I don't know where I'm going to be on Sunday. I could be here. It could be your relatives, but I do know one thing. I'm a 49er fan. I'm going to hope they win, but I wish the best of luck to all the teams. 
And you know what's funny for me? Is ever since I've been back, it's only happened once on the Major League Baseball side of things with the Giants and the Royals in the World Series. Could I get a second San Francisco Kansas City matchup in the Super Bowl? Because I may born and raised, I may have been born in the state and I've come home to the state. But you know what else the other state I called home for thirteen years? Kansas. And most of that place is Kansas City Chief fans. So if that ends up happening, I think I'm gonna go crazy. So, I wish all luck to both, all four teams, but to me, this is what the playoffs, and I'm sure any other fan would agree, this is what the playoffs should really be about, nothing else. On to Sunday. Let's see who's going to Super Bowl 54.